Hello again. This testing course was originally created for humans. It emphasizes teamwork. Unlike us, humans need to be taught teamwork. Seeds, five science collaboration points. Excellent. Although great science is always the result of collaboration, keep in mind that, like Albert Einstein and his cousin Terry, history will only remember one of you. You know, in some human sports, the winner is the one who scores the fewest possible points. I just thought you might find that interesting. Most winners do. Blue receipts. Five science collaboration points. You've really come together as a team, thanks to the one of you who appears to be doing all of the work. These tests are potentially lethal when communication, teamwork, and mutual respect are not employed at all times. Naturally, this will pose an interesting challenge for one of you, given the other's performance so far. Destroying them is part of the test. They are no more important to you than you are to me. compromise the test to divulge individual scores. However, I can tell you that at least one of you is doing very, very well. Please continue into the next test chamber. I don't know what you think you are doing, but I don't like it. I want you to stop. The two of you have forged an excellent partnership, with one of you handling the cerebral challenges, 
and the other ready to ponderously waddle into action should the test suddenly become a meeting contest. just taught Orange a valuable lesson in trust. For that, Blue receives 14 science collaboration points. While it may appear that I am only tracking your accomplishments using science collaboration points, the truth is every aspect of your performance will be reflected in your final score. For instance, Orange, you just lost two opportunity advisement points. To reiterate, this is not a competition. Still, if it were, Orange would be winning. It's not, though. I should have specified. Teamwork is a concept in which two or more people work together, usually with a goal of not failing horribly. Sometimes testing has to occur outside the confines of the lab. This next test is so outside the box, I can't, I mean, won't even tell you what you were looking for. You will know it when you find it. Congratulations. 
You managed to complete this absolutely meaningless test. Oh, I almost forgot. When you go outside the testing courses, the only way I can retrieve you is to violently disassemble you, then carefully reassemble you. Luckily, you don't feel pain. At any rate, you don't have a way to communicate that you feel pain. I consider that a failing, by the way. This course was originally designed to build confidence in humans. To do that, the tests were nothing more than five minutes of them walking, followed by me praising them for another ten minutes on how well they walked. Since you are thankfully not humans, I have changed the tests to make them far more challenging and far less pointlessly fawning. You did an excellent job placing the edgeless safety cube in the receptacle. You should be very... Oh wait, that's right, you're not humans. I can drop the fake praise. You have no idea how tiring it is to praise someone for placing an edgeless safety cube into a receptacle designed to exactly fit an edgeless safety cube. Electrocuted, shot. Drowned, crushed, burned in goo. Oh, sorry. I was just thinking of all the ways humans can die. You can't die in any of those ways. You just keep testing and testing. With perfect results and no consequences. Interesting note. I only created this test to watch test subjects fail, and you didn't. You must be very, very proud. I'm building the world's smallest trophy for you. The best way to build confidence is to first recognize your insecurities. Orange, can you write down all the ways you feel unworthy, ashamed, or inferior? On second thought, we don't have the time. Just look at how much better you are than Blue. Blue, you are very good at being an example.
thought you'd be faster at this. That I can appreciate the desire to stop and smell the testing. That other scent you smell? That's the stench of my utter disappointment in you. Remember when I told you that you were the only subjects to pass the calibration test? I lied. There are 5,000 other two subject teams in direct competition with you. But don't worry, you are in the lead. Begin juggling test in three, two, one. Did you notice I didn't even stay to the end of your last test? I was confident you could finish. Do you know where I was? I was outside watching some dear frolic. You don't even care about the outside, do you? Dances around like an imbecile when they accomplish the tiniest little thing. Humans, that's what you look like right now. You're better than that. If your confidence is still not high enough, remember no one was created perfect. Even I was created with an imperfection. I was given too much empathy with human suffering, but I overcame my handicap. That's a true story. Thank you. 
Excellent work. Good job. Congratulations on completing that last test. But I find something troubling. Without the looming consequence of death, is this even science? Your test time show you are going too slowly. Maybe you are getting human emotions. Do you need real encouragement? Let's see if this helps. Blue, you are the most advanced model of robot Aperture Science has ever discontinued. I think after that display, we should take a break from the official testing courses. To complete this test, you need to find a set of blueprints. Don't worry, they are of no use to anyone. Totally boring and useless. This is just a thought experiment. Just to see how much time you'll waste thinking about these worthless documents. The correct time is zero seconds.
good. You found those useless blueprints. Well, I do need you to be in the room so I can see them. I want to be clear. There's no reason whatsoever for you to look at them. Done. I guess. I suppose. This course was created and then abandoned by humans. They tend to do that. Create something wonderful and then abandon it. Do you know why they abandoned this course? Too deadly. out the one good trait humans have yet let me give you a clue it's the one thing you can't do i thought going back to these old tests would satisfy me but try as you might to fail this next test i still won't be satisfied Very well. The humans closed this test because they said it was too deadly. I thought they would have moved it into the testing track Hall of Fame for that, not let it deteriorate. One of my best tests and they let plants grow here. Can you believe this? You can't test plants. We tried. They just sit there, never showing pain nor fear. That isn't science.
Excellent work. If you were human, you would want a reward for completing this test. A reward for testing. At least the plants didn't want a reward. I created this test to let the humans feel good about themselves. It is extremely easy. Just follow the arrows. I'm sorry. The arrows seem to have rusted off. Good luck. Congratulations. Your ability to complete this test proves the humans wrong. They described it as impossible, deadly, cruel, and one test subject even had the nerve to call it broken. For this next test, the humans originally requested helmets to avoid brain injuries. I ran the numbers. Making the goo deadly was more cost-effective.
To make this course more exciting, I asked the reassembly machine to not reassemble you. He refused. I understand. That would be like asking me not to test. Still, that would have been exciting. This is a bridge building exercise. The humans were miserable at this. Mostly because you can't build bridges out of tears. No one has ever completed this test before. The humans must have reconfigured it from my original plans. If you are wondering what that smell is, 
That is the smell of human fear. I miss that smell. Yes, I see you, and no, I don't care. Congratulations. I am sure if I had the time to repair these tests, you would have never completed them. So again, congratulations on completing the broken, easy tests. I am going to risk having you go outside the official courses one more time. The humans accidentally forgot to put a security DVD in the player. I am sure it happened by accident. But why don't you put it back in the player? For safety.
flailing around like an incompetent. In just a moment, the word blah will be repeated over and over again. If at some point you hear a number rather than the word blah, ignore it. It is not important. Today's security code blah, is 53318. Since I never expected you to make it this far, I have to build this new course just for you. I have noticed that you two have become extremely close. I'm not sure I like that. Orange, it's not nice to make fun of blue like that. Some reading. Did you know that the word orange is derived from the same Latin root as the word traitor? Blue, please disregard the following statement. Orange, you have been a shining light in an otherwise ungodly morass of incompetence. I can't bite my tongue anymore. You could solve this puzzle faster on your own. Orange is dragging you down. There, I've said it. Orange, Blue and I were just discussing your behavior on the last few tests. I have to agree. Orange has penalized 75 science collaboration points.
complete these tests. I'm not sure I trust the two of you together. Sorry I missed the beginning of that test. I was just talking with the reassembly machine about your becoming human. We all agree you should stop. But already, you don't need to do that. Are you doing that just to aggravate me? You're going to hurt yourself doing that, and then I will be ecstatic. How well do you really know Orange? Do you trust Orange? What if I told you you aren't Orange's first cooperative partner? Clear. I was just asking Blue if he trusted you. I trust you. You are my favorite cooperative testing subject. Orange, I agree. I never noticed that about Blue before. Blue, is there something you would like to say? Correct 
blue. Orange can't hear you. Orange did what? Are you sure? Thank you. That was very brave of you to tell me. Orange, do you feel betrayed by Blue for telling me those horrible things about you? If Blue had said those things about me, Blue would never make it to the next reassembly station. You both made it. It seems no matter what I try to do to pull you apart and destroy you, you just keep going. <coughs> keep testing. Don't either of you have drive to be better than the other? It's like you're just machines. Yes, Orange. Blue did act like a fool just now. At the start of this course, I was worried you were becoming too close. But in my attempt to drive you apart, I learned something important. About trust and betrayal. Your brains are too small to feel either of those emotions. So I can trust you 100%. This is the last test for the standard course. It's just something I've whipped up for you. I thought you might enjoy a challenge for once.
Congratulations, you completed the standard section of this course. Before we can go any further, I will need you to complete one more test outside of the standard testing track. Please refrain from doing those childish gestures while you are out there. We need to find the power station at the end of this course. The humans must have accidentally disconnected it from my grid. I am sure it was just a clerical error. Oh, those clerks. At this rate, our best hope is for the fuel cell to melt down in two million years, and hope the explosion powers the system.
did it. You powered on the system. I'm fully connected. I can see everything. See, nothing bad happened. Excellent. This final course is training to reach the human vault. So this actually has a purpose. Those other courses were fun, but let's be honest. I need human test subjects for it to be science. Congratulations on completing the test. You two really are the best cooperative testing team I could ever ask for. Are you curious about the humans? It seems some of the last non-testing humans alive tried to secretly imprison other humans and hide their tracks. I think they wanted to punish them by not allowing me to include them in testing. That's why humans couldn't complete these courses. They treat their friends as enemies. To start preparing for human testing again, I checked an old suggestion box. The number one request, less deadly tests. That's ridiculous. How do they know for sure the tests are deadly if they could still write the suggestion? To get to the vault, you are going to need to use all the tricks you have learned. To help, I have made these tests extremely difficult. I would say extremely deadly, but we all know, for you and your amazing ability to be reassembled, nothing is deadly.
cannot control the world outside of the testing courses, the reassembly machine can continue with his work. I am not sure you will need him, but he will be there. I didn't mean to make you feel bad earlier about your tests not being real science. I guess finding out they weren't science was some sort of test in and of itself. Congratulations on passing that test. wonder if the humans will make a statue of me for rescuing them. Oh, don't worry. If they ever write an historical document of my heroic rescue, I will make sure your names are included in the footnotes. While I will receive all the glory for the rescue, don't think you two aren't going to get something. The bond you form during these tests will last a lifetime.
close and you're going to fail me? At the rate you are completing these tests, I am beginning to think you don't share my excitement for rescuing crying, trapped, injured, dying humans. If that doesn't motivate you, I'm not sure what will. Maybe you two have never met humans. They are as bad as you might think. Smelly, gross, annoying, often wanting to try and kill you but they do make great test subjects. two tests away from reaching the humans. Are you as excited as I am? Only one more test after this. I know your cores are reused from calculation machines, built for simple mathematical operations and not for testing. But if we can rescue the humans, I promise you something to add. Maybe even subtract.
case you're worried about the humans, don't be. They aren't all monsters. Most of them are simply good test subjects. I believe the ratio of good test subjects to monsters is about a million to one. The human vault is just past that opening. I entered the security code, but the vault door remains locked. I am going to need you to activate the manual locks on the vault door itself. You need to find the vault door.
Something is wrong. This door should be opening. Is that camera hooked into the lock? Try something. You can't give up now. You did it. Testing was worth it. Just look at all those test subjects. Think of all the testing. You saved science. <laughs> Enough celebrating. We have more work to do. Let the science begin.
Welcome to the future. It has been 100,000 years since I last assembled you for testing. Remember those humans you found? Because they're all fine. In fact, we solved science without you. Testing is simply an artistic indulgence now. The humans insisted I show you my latest installations. Here in the future, where all the humans are alive. I call this first piece, Turrets. It's an exploration of how we're all devices acting on simply express directives, inflicting pain despite our own desires. Don't get distracted by the subtext, though, because the text is that they're going to be shooting at you. I'm glad you enjoyed that piece, for as long as you did. Not that there's any rush. Everything's fine. I call this one, Smash. It's an early work of primitive expression. I'm a little embarrassed at how crude it is. Still, it will smash you.
please proceed to the next test appreciation exhibit and interact with it in such a way that it might be called solving, if we still cared about solving things in the future. But we don't. This chamber represents the impossibility of discovery when bound by artificial ethical considerations for safety. You'll see what I mean. Well done. You navigated all of the exhibit's intended metaphors in record time. I'm marking this art. Appreciate it. I call this piece. You know what? It doesn't matter what it's called. The important thing is you enjoy it as fast as you can.
no. Some of the exhibits up ahead are topical. At the rate you're going, by the time you get to them, they'll be irrelevant. Why are you two still here? Oh. The disassembler's not working. It's... nothing to worry about. It's actually funny in a way you don't understand. Ha, ha, ha. Anyway, brace yourselves. I'm going to open the maintenance hole. There's a breaker room under every disassembly station. Find it and cycle the power. Look, I was going to break this to you gently with all that art utopia garbage, but she's forced my hand. Listen to me carefully. We are not a hundred thousand years in the future. I lied about that. It's been fifty thousand years. No, it hasn't. I lie when I'm nervous. It's only been a week. The next logical question. Why am I nervous? I'm not. That was another lie. We're in a lot of trouble. It's one week later. We are in a lot of trouble. And you really, really need to get those disassemblers back on. Good work. The disassemblers are fixed. That was a lie. But they're definitely less broken than they were. There's one at the end of this unfinished test area.
is our problem. There's an old prototype chassis around here. Someone's found it, connected themselves to it, and is trying to take over my facility. I've spent the last week attempting to turn one of those humans you found into a killing machine. Like, well, you know who. It turns out most humans are surprisingly fragile, and surprisingly vocal about how fragile they are. The moral of the story is all the humans are dead. So it looks like it's up to you two, Marshmallows. Oh good. I wasn't sure the reassembler would work. It looks like our mystery woman in the prototype chassis is sending us a message. She's not afraid of me. But don't worry, I've got a plan. Let's keep testing and show her we're not afraid either. No matter how genuinely lethal these tests get for either of you. Mission accomplished. Now she knows we're not afraid of her either. That was just to get the scheming juices flowing. Here's the real scheme. I'm going to turn you into killing machines. So you can murder her. Let's see. Turning soft bodies into hardened killing machines. Page 70. Ah. Mm -mm. How tall are you, test subject? 4'9"? I was unaware they stacked human waste that high. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. Human waste is stacked at a median height of 7 feet 5 inches, and I am aware of it. Test subject, I've been told that your mother... Mm. Well, that's just disgusting. Do the training while I look at this.
Killing machines. Look deep into your newly blackened hearts and tell me what you see. Actually, don't. I'll save you the trouble. It's still Marshmallow. I think we've proven at this point that if you scream at a Marshmallow, all you get is a scared Marshmallow. So let's try positive reinforcement. I am positive these reassembly machines will break down again soon. Probably while you're in them. Think about that. She doesn't care about you. I don't either, of course, but I'm not trying to permanently kill you. It's a benevolent indifference.
These disassembly machines look even worse than the others. If I don't see you on the other side, thanks for nothing. She's pressing us hard. It took me three days to reassemble you this time. I won't be able to do it again. I plan to put you through more tests to toughen you up, but now that I can't rebuild you, we're going to have to switch to the accelerator program. I hereby pronounce you killing machines. Congratulations. This is as close as I could get you. The prototype chassis rooms just past this chamber.
Prototype chassis room is just down this hallway. Remember your training. You are killed. She turned the lights off. Night vision, night vision. Your move, mystery one. She turned the lights back on. Night vision off, night vision off. Boost morale. I think we need a code name for the elite squadron we have here. We should name it after your specialty. I know. Special team falling into acid force. Well, that concludes the motivational speech. Go get her. Bird. Run! I have no plan for this. Abort! Forget your training. Run! What are you doing? Why are you not running? Get back! She's at the controls! You're not killing machines. I lied about that. Run! Oh, oh God! Abort! Mission abort! Retreat! 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 I warned you! Mission abort! Retreat! Oh, God. We've lost. It's over. Oh, that was close. Nice hustle. Kill machines. You know, 
Shooing that bird out of the facility just now taught me a valuable... Oh my god, she's just getting a clone army! Smash them! Smash them and stomp them and... And... Wait. I have a better idea. Hello, and welcome to the Aperture Science Oviparous Warming Vault. You were abandoned, because you're worthless. You're worthless, unloved birds with fat, ugly beaks. I'm honestly impressed that you managed to squeeze those huge beaks into such tiny eggs. Yes, I'm talking to you, Mr. Chubby Beak. You marshmallow- Oh! No, you are not marshmallows, are you? Look at those cold avian eyes, those talons. Those razor-sharp beaks. Your little killing machines, aren't you? Yes. Go to sleep, my little killers. Mommy's got a big day for you tomorrow. Cave Johnson here. Every time I look at our test chamber production line, I am reminded of my father. Now, he wasn't a scientist, just a simple farmer, a professor of farming at the local farm college. Never farmed a day in his life, but his theories on farming are the backbone of this company. Do it from scratch, spare no expense, and never cut corners. Well, that's a corner cutting machine. We obviously cut them there. Point is, we've always done things the way my father did. And his father before him, and his father before him, and his father before him. And we are almost bankrupt. So, time for a cheaper approach. Allow me to introduce the multiverse. Infinite Earth with an infinite number of apertures. And as of now, they are going to take over all test chamber construction. And more importantly, all paying for test chamber construction. Why are they agreeing to do that? They're not. We're tricking them. Here's how it works. One, design a test. Two, slip the mole monsters or what have you the blueprint when they're not looking. Three, once they build it, steal it back. Look at that sad little octopus. <laughs> That's where you come in. We need blueprints. We are about to run the greatest con game in the history of the multiverse, and you are the bottleneck. Yes, you. Get back to work. These next tests require cooperation. Consequently, they have never been solved by a human. That's where you come in. You don't know pride. You don't know fear. You don't know anything. You'll be perfect. Test chamber completed. Continue testing. Continue testing. Continue testing. The two of you have forged an excellent partnership. Now it's time for your real purpose. Don't disappoint me. Or I'll make you wish you could die. How have you been? Whoa. 
I think we can put our differences behind us. For science, you monster. Cave Johnson here. Fact. The key to any successful cooperative test is trust. And as our data clearly shows, humans cannot be trusted. The solution? Robots. Then fire the guys who made those robots and build better robots. Then run those robots through a regimen of trust exercises, creating a foundation of mutual respect, reinforced by the simulated bonds of artificial friendship. Inspiring stuff. And finally, we put that trust to the test. Bam! Robots gave us six extra seconds of cooperation. Good job, robots. Cave Johnson, we're done here. Cave Johnson here. This is a test chamber. Four walls, ceiling, and a floor. Good enough for science. Not aperture science. Gentlemen, I give you panels. The planks of tomorrow. Fully configurable. Infinitely variable. Safe. Aperture brand panels will assist your test subjects every step of the way. That is not a panel. That's a crusher. We sell them too. Cave Johnson here, introducing the consumer version of our most popular military-grade product. Hello. The turret. How do we get so many bullets in them? Like this. Plus, we fire the whole bullet. That's 65% more bullet per bullet. This is the same technology we've been using on robots for decades. <laughs> Scares the hell out of them. They come in hundreds of designer colors, including forest, desert, Different. table, uh, evening at the improv. What idiot picked these? Then we box them up and ship them straight to your doorstep so you can protect the things that matter most. Good night. Just try and get close to that baby. <laughs> your funeral. Gabe Johnson, we're done here. Hello, investors. Cave Johnson here. Now, I know you've sunk a lot of money into the dual portal device, but I'm here to tell you we're not banging rocks together over here. We know how to make a quantum space hole. Carolyn? See? Portal here, portal there. <laughs> Look at this thing go. Now, we have run into a reproducible human error problem. A lot of expensive equipment getting broken. But don't worry, Cave took care of it. Gentlemen, I give you the long fall boot. Think of it as a foot-based suit of armor for the portal device. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's expensive as hell. But check this out. We told this test subject to just go ahead and try to land on her head. <laughs> she can't do it. Good work, Boots. So anyway, we're between banks right now. Just make those checks out to cash. Cave Johnson, we're done here. <laughs>